Good day, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to my presentation. My name is Kanda Yi, and I'm from the University of Vienna. Today, I'm going to present you the topic of deep learning based video compression, which Professor Helmut Lavatz and myself were working on. The use of videos and streaming platforms in general have increased over the last few years especially with the COVID-19 pandemic, as we can see. As of the current state, many applications and browsers use codecs to reduce the video sizes and transmit them faster over the internet. But with the recent developments of complex artificial intelligence and neural networks, breakthrough in various areas have been made. So the question arose, if we would be able to apply these innovations to improve faster video transmissions even more than codecs are capable of. We could try to teach an AI to study a sequence of frames and let it convert this information into a more condensed representation while hopefully retaining most of the quality. So, our goal of the paper was to explore this possibility by implementing a project that is able to compress the file size of a video by using deep learning. This compressed file should be decoded by a receiver while it ideally reconstructs the original video's quality as much as possible. The AI should be trained on a set of videos that are in the same category for example, it should be able to learn and reconstruct face videos or Tai Chi movements. It can even learn how a robot arm um, functions, moves and other things like dance moves. In our research, we discovered a project from Sierra Hin et al. called First Order Motion Model. By training a neural network on a video, this project is capable of transferring motion to an image within a video category. For example, videos of human faces or Tai Chi movements. This led to the idea of extracting these key points and movements information, compressing them and sending these information over a network to a receiver. Keypoints are points in a video that are consistent within the category, for example, eyes on a face. On the right side, we can see um, an example of such keypoints. These keypoints normally are on certain areas on a model and they have to be consistent for the neural network, but they do, do not necessarily mean um, anything to a user. The receiver can then reconstruct the video by using one source image, which is, is, which is the first frame of the original video. We also found a similar approach to ours, which came from Wang et al. They proposed the same method of extraction extracting image information using key point extraction and one source image. But the difference lies in the use case. Wang et al. proposed this approach in a video conferencing setting, while according to Seara Hin et al., our project could also be used to train on other motion models like robot arms, for example, and is focusing on reducing the transmission data as much as possible. Our approach requires a 256 times 256 video res resolution, which is optimally quadratic in size. It can have a different resolution, of course, but it will be inevitable scaled down to this resolution or scaled up. This will be referred to as the driving video. For testing, we utilized face videos and pre-trained face models for key point detection and generation. Because of performance issues, we needed to split the longer videos into smaller segments, since 
in, in certain too long videos with too many frames could overstrain the RAM and cause performance problems. At the beginning, we took the first frame of the chosen video, which will be referred to as the source image. Then the key point detector detected the key points and fine transformations of the source image and the frame of the the one frame of the driving video that we are currently processing. The fine transformations tell us the positioning of each key point and define what areas areas are affected by each. As the next step, relative motion was applied, applied which calculates the transformation between the first frame of the video and the currently processed frame. This motion transformation represents the warping of the source image, which occurs later in the generation module. That means that it is the difference between the source and the currently processed image. Now we export these information by quantizing the tensors of the key points and transformations by converting them into an in 60 data structure instead of a float 32 value. This is done because we want to save even more data. This data will then be turned into a binary files and compressed with the LZMA2 zip algorithm. The receiver has to unpack this data and convert them back to a float32 value to process it. The dense motion network then generates information about which areas in the source image need to be moved. At the end of the generator, Recon um, the generator reconstructs the original video frame by warping the source image and inpainting areas that were not visible in the source. F by using optical flow, it, the generator knows how to warp the um, areas and using the transformation mask we know which areas are affected. The occlusion map is there to tell the generator which part of the image need to be um, inpainted because they were not in the initial source image. This procedure has to be done to every frame in the segment before continuing to the next one. These segments will be later concatenated to one whole video. The next topic is the architecture of the project. There are three main components. The unit architecture that is integrated um, as the key point detector, an architecture by Johnson et al, referred to as the Johnson architecture, which trained loss function and generation module that warps the source image. And so and the unit architecture is used for um, grouping pixels in the image into heat maps, where each heat map corresponds to one key point. These heat maps indicate which areas are affected by the transformation when the key point is moved. The Johnson architecture is a deep residual convolution neural network for training the loss functions of a model. This architecture utilizes multiple loss functions to evaluate the difference between two images using perceptual comparison instead of pixel by pixel comparison. For image generation, a specialized generation module is used, which is able to warp the features of an object in an image. This architecture allows us, if properly trained, to generate an image that warps the object of the in the foreground according to an optical flow map, a transmission, transformation mask, and an occlusion map. occlusion map. Now we can we come to the result evaluation, evaluation section. 
Here we focused on testing shorter videos which involve moving and speaking faces. We compared a set of images with codecs like H264 and AB1. This diagram shows us how much data was transmitted in kilobyte by each encoding, but did not include the size of the source image. As you can see, in regard to file size reduction, our version performed much better than the commonly used H264 and also beat the AV1 encoding. Each of the videos were under 2000 frames long and had different types of settings. Some focused on facial expressions and other were zooming in on the person. What was noticeable though is that our compression didn't change much in file size regardless of the original video file. We also made experience on longer videos which had more frames and were loop versions of the shorter ones. Our results performed even better in that regard. While the long news video were 46 minutes long, the long Obama video was 1 hour and 17 minutes long. Here we can see that the file sizes are in megabytes because of the long videos. Although these results are impressive, in regard to video quality, we did not achieve results that were as well as the file size reduction. In this, we compared the original video to the AV1 encoding and our approach to, yeah. And sadly, the quality of our videos measured in PSNR were only about half as good as the AV1 encodings. Sometimes, there were even very noticeable artifacts and weird distortions due to incorrect warpings or strange movements or strange starting positions even. So I'm going to show you a few examples of um, generated videos. First of all, we have Obama and you can see that um, there, there is missing a lot of details and also the light, lighting um, of the forehead and on the hair are not, not really good. As a se second exa example, we used a news reporter. Um, it seems pretty good besides the blinking which, if you look closely, doesn't blink as well. So the right one is the generated um, image and the left one is the um, original one. Um, sorry for not clarifying this. Here it is more apparent which was the original image. Um, the left one um, here we wanted to test uh, how well it can handle facial expressions and as we can see um, some facial expressions were not generated well and we can see on the right side of the right video that the in-paintings uh, didn't work well. So, additionally, we determined quite a few limitations to the application of our project. First of all, we require a 256 times 256 resolution. This can't be changed since the model is trained on this resolution only. The major issues in this project lies in choosing appropriate videos. The best results can be achieved by using videos where the camera doesn't move too much and the background is static, while the person uses clear face expressions since the neuronal network doesn't pick up subtle, subtle expressions well. 
Also, the video should have as little occlusions as possible, since the in-painting is sometimes not very convincing. Here we can see a few bad examples, like the face distortions, for example, if the face is moving to, is turning too much. Also, the static background, um, the, the background, the moving background is not helping in generating, since the module doesn't get any more information about the background movements. Uh, as the next example is a woman um, who tries um, detailed face expressions like um, winking and lip biting and as you can see the quality is not as good as the other videos. To conclude, um, our project performed well in regard to file size, but were not impressive when it came to limitations and the quality of the resulting videos. While they were perceptually very similar to the original, it contains major artifacts that are disruptive to the viewer and not true to the original video. This should be um, improved. Although the results were not perfect, the partial success of this project showed us the potential of artificial intelligence for video compression and should encourage further research in this area. There can be much there can be much more done and I believe that this is only this should only be the first step in in considering neural networks in codecs or video compression. Thank you for your attention.